Okay, now that we've got all the rings placed in the block exactly to each cylinder, already pre-gapped each one to their specific measurement, we are going to start uh, putting the rods together with the pistons, and that's going to be using these wrist pins that come with each specific set. You can get upgraded ones, we're just using the ones that came with the set, as long with the two side C-clips. You're also going to be needing a little bit of lube, which we use, or we're going to be using, Permatex Ultra Slick Assembly Lube, and we want to make sure that everything is nice and lubricant, lubricated because uh, it ensures uh, less issues, especially during uh, the first startup. Okay, first things first, each motor is going to be different, of course, uh, but for these Honda engines, I know for a fact B-Series is like this. Uh, I'll have to verify for K, H, D, and a couple others, but these dowels, that if you look inside of the rod, I believe they call them the dowels, but the notches that go inside of the rod for where the bearing sits, you want this part being on the side of the rod where the exhaust is gonna be. So in this case, you can see the two valve release in the piston, a good way to always know, the smaller valve release will be the exhaust. And this isn't why, but it's a good analogy to remember, you have air and gasoline coming in through the intake and only air escaping through the exhaust that's not why the piss the why the valves are different sizes but it's a good analogy so for example on this one since we have the notches on this side we're going to want the exhaust on that side so instead of seating it like this we're going to flip it around and seat it this way and motors can run the other way around i've seen them personally uh taken apart with it having ran that way with no issues whatsoever but this is how honda wants us to do it and this is how we should stick to it essentially so the notches on this side, the same side as the exhaust. Now that we have that found and situated, we're gonna come over here, I'm gonna sit down, but just so it makes it a little easier. You're gonna get your wrist pin. We've already cleaned these off with brake cleaner, make sure that it's 100% clean. Same thing with the rod and the piston. You're gonna get your assembly lube. Open it up first, of course. And there's a couple companies that make these assembly lubes. Um, to me, they're all very similar. You can kind of go with your personal preference on these. Permatex is good. I've, used, I've seen it used in a lot of motors. I've used them in a couple myself. And um, I've seen people do it with straight motor oil as well as some with WD-40. And it really depends what your budget is, but if you can get the right assembly lube, like in this case, this kind of assembly lube, go for it. Don't skimp out on it. It's an insurance that's very cheap. This one is almost in all the way. This right here, we can already start to put a C-clip in it. So just like a piston ring, you wanna squeeze on the outside and put it in and then uh, kind of wiggle it into place. It's fairly easy, like right there, I have it set already. And then you'll hear the click when it goes in. One click, then right in there, the other click. We'll place the other clip in. You can see it's nice and free. It doesn't have any binding issues at all. Make sure like we talked about, exhaust is on the notch side. Then you can set this one off to the side. We're gonna do the rest of the pistons and rods and then we'll put the rings on. Very good, we got all the pistons on the rods. If you saw in the little clip, of the time lapse you saw I was using this little socket. Sometimes it gets a little hard to push down with your fingers, especially when it's all lubed up. So a good trick is to put a small socket in there and just push with your hand. And the three uh, rods that follow the one that I did the demonstration on went in perfectly, no, very smoothly without any of the need to ha hammer it with a mallet or anything. Um, the next thing that we're gonna do is decide which one is one, two, three, four, obviously, because that's gonna correspond exactly with each piston is gonna correspond with each cylinder. So we put cylinder one uh, rings on this one. This one will only be good for cylinder one. Put cylinder two rings on this one. It'll only be good for cylinder two, etc. So we're gonna go ahead and start switching them over one by one. 
Before we do any of the gapped rings, we're gonna put the bottom three, which are for the oil control. This one goes on top. These two are the same actually, so it doesn't matter, but one goes on top, then this goes in the center, and then this one on the bottom. Um, these don't have a top or bottom, so they can go either way. With the center piece, you want them not to be overlapping. You want them to be butted against each other. I like to put the center ring on first. I just gotta kind of gotta play with it. Angle's kind of weird right now because I'm trying to let you guys see right there. I'm doing this, but if not, I'd normally be sitting down. Then I go for the second ring. Just kind of gotta work it on there. You don't want to do it too crazy, too many steps. Just want to do a little bit at a time to not break the ring. And it helps when your hands aren't full of lube. So if you want to wash your hands before doing this, that would help a lot. Just got to work it in. Now I have that one set on top of the center ring or the control. Same goes for this one right here. I gotta work it on there one step at a time. And then this one is gonna go on the bottom. There we go, now we've got the bottom placed on there. I'm gonna pull the ring out for cylinder one. This is our top ring. Then our bottom ring. Like we talked about, we wanna make sure that the letters are facing upwards. Now we're gonna use that tool. Just place it right there and you can see it opens it up. You can just put it on how we put the bottom ones on, but for sake of the video, we're doing it like this. Just gotta open it up and it just basically slips right over. You wanna open it as little as possible. That way you have the least chance of a ring breaking on you. So once you have that open, just put it in the next groove that there is available. And just work it around the piston. Now that's nice and free right there. Before you put any of the rings on, make sure that there's no debris inside of this and that it's been cleaned thoroughly. Same thing for the top ring, letters facing upwards. Put in this little tool. It's actually really easy to use. And right there. That's in the top groove. Well, we're working it into the top groove. And it's 100% free, no friction whatsoever. You can clamp them together. And like I said, we're gonna be doing the angles of which gap to be where. Some people like them one, two, three, four type thing. I think Wysco came with a sheet right here. Yeah, the end gap placements. We'll go over this a little bit more when we go to put the pistons in. But I'm just gonna set it on the time lapse real quick and put the rest of the rings on. We got all the rings placed onto the actual pistons themselves. Now we're gonna go to the Wysco sheet and look at how they want us to put the end gap. So if you look over here, it says top compression ring, second compression ring, top oil rail, which is the, the bottom part on the piston, then bottom oil rail, and then right here, the oil expander gap. Although if you look spe uh, closely on the sheet right, right here, it says engine front, and since our Honda engine is facing this way, then we're gonna flip this upside down. And I think this is actually how Honda specifies it as well. Top left corner, top uh, compression ring, then top right corner is the, the second compression ring, and then the top gap right here, bottom gap of the oil control, and then the oil ring expander right on this side. So, just to show you real quick, exhaust is on this side, top ring, I'm gonna put in the right corner. You can see the gap right here, second ring, left corner and then it's kind of hard to show in the video the bottom uh, gap since they're so small but um, for the bottom it's on the left corner so got that right there bottom left corner and then the top one is on this corner right here then we just have to find where the teeth meet and bring that to 
this portion on the top where the intake valves are. Um, aside from that, we're gonna set all the rings on each piston to that specific um, location, and then we'll show you how to put them in the block. Fast forward a day in the future, or fast forward a day, just picked up my crank, got uh, the journals polished up, he said everything was within spec, he checked the specs with uh, his tools and everything, but we're still gonna plastic gauge it at home, obviously. But uh, just nice reassurance to make sure that the crank was all good. This isn't the crank that blew up on the car, this is actually a, a spare crank that I had at home. Uh, same stroke, LS. So we should be good to go and assemble the motor, the rest of it tonight after work. After you've got your piston rings all set to how you'd like it, there's this little piston ring compressor tool. Open it up to a little bit bigger than the piston size. You don't have to do this exact, you just do it by eyeball measurement. And you slip this over the piston. Make sure your piston rings don't move and that they stay as much in the same location as you can. So I like to get the piston about halfway there. So I see that these two bands cover both sides, the top and the bottom of all the rings. So we get it nice and tight. So now we've got this hand tight all the way with this uh, little square bit tool that comes with the ring compressor. Or always remember the big, the big dish is the intake, small is exhaust. So we're gonna come over to our block. And before we put our pistons in, we wanna make sure that the cylinders are gonna accept it nice and easy. So we just hit it with some WD-40 all around the bore. Next, you're gonna get your piston, along with the rod assembly. Make sure that it goes in nice and straight. You wanna make sure the rod has as, as little as possible hit on the walls. I get a little rubber mallet. What I'm doing right here is making sure that the sleeve is all 100% squared and around the, uh, the piston 100%. camera a little so you can get a better view Top of the piston then I like to just give it with the wood down the center of it and it's in right now I don't have the crankshaft in reason being uh, we just got it back from the machine shop but the the force of the uh, piston ring should be enough to keep it in there just put your hand underneath just in case as you can see inside of the block We've got all of this open space, and I like to actually do it like this first, make sure everything's nice and clean, set our bearings in as well as our rod bearings, and then set our crankshaft over it, and then pull the rods towards the crank. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place the rest of the rods in right now, the, bearing, the pistons and rods, that way they are all set and ready to go for the uh, crank. And at the same time, I'm gonna take these rod bolts off along with the corresponding caps for each rod. Something else interesting to note, Right here it says A1 on this first rod cap. It also says A1 at the bottom of this rod where it corresponds with actual other piece. Uh, some rods have them listed very clearly. Some have them uh, listed a little bit less clearly, just edged in. This one is actually, you can see it's nice and cut into the actual cap itself. So it makes it easy to determine which rod goes to which cap. Now we've got all of the pistons and rods into the block. We are gonna go and grab my crank. So there's a few different ways that we're gonna clean the actual crankshaft. One of which would be, you're just getting everything off of the surface, and that's pretty obvious. It's something that people overlook, I'm about to show you right now, is the little holes all along the journals. You can have little debris stuck in there, or when you have them polished, you can have little bits of metal, or other junk that you don't want in there. So if I can ever fit this little straw in here, and start cleaning it up.
Now that we've got the crank fully clean, I'm just gonna hit it with some light WD-40 just to prevent oxidation. Like I said on previous stuff, if you're putting the motor together immediately, you probably won't have a problem, but it's a good practice to make sure that you have all metal parts coated with some type of oil. That way it doesn't oxidize over. Okay, now we're back over top. We're gonna be putting the bearings in. Before we go ahead and do that, we wanna make sure that all the surfaces for where the bearings are gonna sit are nice and clean and degreased. This goes for the bearing surface on the, the block itself for the crank, as well as the bearing surface for where the rods go. If you can see, you can see right there the rod bolt, or the rod, the rod itself. So using a little brake clean, we're just gonna go over each surface, make sure it's nice and clean, free of oil. I like to start off by doing the rod bearings first. It's just a lot easier to access when there's nothing else in there. So we are gonna start by doing that. We've got our King Racing bearings. Make sure you get the dowel on the correct side. A little dowel right there, a little notch. You see the little notch right there. Just like we had talked about before, this goes on the exhaust side. Just gotta push it in. I like getting the notch in first and then matching it to the bottom. Now we're gonna start working on our mains. Got them all right there. Same way, just find the notch and push them up. Over back on the bench, we've got our main caps all degreased, cleaned, ready to go. And the bearing for the mains are gonna be different for the block side and the crank side, or the block side and the cap side. Uh, the block side, the little notches are on the left-hand side, depending on what angle you're looking at it, but it's on one side. Then for the caps, the little notch is straight down the center. So that's something to keep in mind when you're assembling it. If you feel like you've got the wrong ones, chances are you're just looking at it uh, without looking at the block and the cap ones correctly. Just like anything, you're just gonna set these in, just like we did in the block. Same process. Sometimes there's a little oily film on the back of these bearings. So I like to clean them off a little brake cleaner first. Now we've got all but one of the bearings placed on, which is the thrush bearings. And these are actually gonna go right here. They sit on the second from the left journal. And sometimes they're a little tricky to get there to stand by themselves. So a good trick is to put a little assembly lube on the back end of them. And they tend to stick just enough for you to place the crank. Putting those thrusts in right now. Just get them to sit. I'm getting the crank. And this is a dry install. We're not putting any lubricant on the bearings yet because we're about to plastic gauge it and make sure everything's within spec. We don't need to put the um, lubricant in yet. I'm gonna start by plastic gauging the mains first. And by doing that, I'm just going to turn the crank enough for it to be the top center of it, just like this without any of the holes. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with how other people do it. But that's just how I personally like to do it. So I'm gonna get this into position. I've got all my plastic gauge laid out, as you can see, each strip on a journal for the crank. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get the corresponding cap for each one, place it on top, and we're gonna to torque it to spec. So we're gonna start cap five. It's got little al alignment dowels on each one. Two. 
Once you have them all threaded in by finger, you're just gonna start to bring it down. I'm not gonna tighten it. Just saving time right here. Depending on how you assemble this, some people will run ARPs hardware, just like we do for head studs, out of the block, and then have this use a stud and a nut instead of a stock bolt. Some people do this with great success. If you do that and end up doing it, I recommend highly that you get a line bore, which is when you get the machine that basically cuts like a cylinder is cut, but instead of cutting the cylinder, it cuts the main caps, and it ensures that there is 100% straightness throughout the where the, the crank sits itself. Reason being, if you use studs, then it, it changes the torque a little bit. We want to make sure that everything is all nice and flush. People run the stock uh, main bolts up to like seven, 800 horsepower, which is the range that we're trying to be in, so there shouldn't be an issue. Each engine is gonna be different in torque spec and sequence. For these, I like to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in the crisscross outside rotating pattern, as well as steps. For the final torque of 54 or 56, I'll put a little um, text to show you the exact one once I double check. I go in steps. Right now I'm doing 30. And just when you're torquing every, anything that has more than one bolt, it's very good to go into steps. That way you evenly apply, apply pressure. Now we've got the first torque sequence down. I'm just bringing it up to the full torque. 56, as I just verified online. You wanna ensure you have a good torque wrench. This one's never failed me. It's a Craftsman. Snap-on's good. Don't get a Harbor Freight one. I use some Harbor Freight stuff like regular sockets for everyday use, but I would not trust something that has to be calibrated with their company, sorry. Once you're done with that, Immediately zero out your torque wrench. That way the spring inside stays nice and fresh. Then you're gonna break all these loose in a reverse sequence of how you tighten it. Although it doesn't really matter since each individual cap is its individual cap, but you still wanna keep in the habit of using the sequence. Um, using the breaker bar, not the torque wrench. Now you have everything taken off. You're gonna nice and easily Take off these main caps. It can be a little tricky sometimes because of the dowels and then the rods get really hard, but make do. I find wiggling it back and forth helps a lot. As long as you're not pushing down on it, you're trying to pull up as much as you can. And here we go. Let me set this to the side. And I want you to see exactly what the plastic gauge has done. It's laid down a little flattened version of what it was before. So where is my, over here. You're gonna mark this up or line it up with um, the side right here, thousandths of an inch. You'll line it up exactly with which one it matches and then you'll get your clearance measurement. And each motor is going to be different. You should have them close to spec as possible. And uh, we're using closest to Honda manufacturer specifications. So I'm going to go ahead and take off the rest of the caps. Uh, make sure that all my specs are within clearance. Or all my clearances are within spec. And then move forward from there. Now that you've got all the plastic gauge cleaned up, which is very simple to do. Just a little bit of brake cleaner and a rag. You want to, well I'm, I'm going to at least, take the crank back off. Lubricate the bearings with some assembly lube. Place it back in, do the final torque on the caps, and then I'll go over to the rods and start doing the rod plastic gauge.
We've already got the first sequence down for two of the rods. That's to 24, I think I put it. Final torque on these should be 45, according to Crower, which makes the rod and the bolt. And we're just doing the same process, plastic gauge in it, just like we did the engine. Now break them loose with breaker bar, not torque wrench. Now we're gonna re uh, repeat the process that we did for the mains on the rods and make sure everything's within spec. Oh.